Well, hi everyone. I was able to obtain some information today from Rhode Island DOT that I think is quite interesting. So I got that information this afternoon and I thought I would produce this video and push it out because I think the findings are rather interesting. You know, I've made these public records requests to drill down on the technical aspects of what's going on with this entire bridge project, the demolition and the rebuild, the design build or the replacement. And uh, this is, has to do with uh, project management and how money's being spent. And so I'm just gonna present the facts based on the information that was submitted to me and let you draw your own conclusions about what the implications uh, could be about this. So first, a little history. Aetna Bridge is doing the demolition of the westbound bridge. And they were awarded that contract in July of 2024. About a month later, they're named in the lawsuit for the westbound Washington Bridge circumstances that led to its closure in December 2023. And Aetna is among several other defendants. So here's a copy of that original contract for demolition. And if we look at the scope, this was just for demolition of the superstructure. So they say includes removal of the bridge superstructure above the bearings along spans one through 18 and spans R1 through R3. The demolition will include the removal of the existing bridge deck, parapets, spandrel facade, arch beams, dropped in pre-stressed concrete, and so on. Then we go to the change order. This was in October when they decided, yes, we need to remove the existing piers and the tops of the existing foundations because Rhode Island DOT decided to not reuse the existing foundations, which is the correct call in my mind. I just don't understand why they didn't make that decision uh, from, the, from the onset of this demolition project. So the description for the change order to include the demolition substructure, it says substructure demolition at the request of RIDOT. It talks about this proposal at Aetna Bridge uh, submitted on October 4th, performed demolition of the existing substructure for Bridge 700, Westbound Bridge. So they reviewed it and they awarded the change order. Then we go to November. This is a $695,000 change order. And the reason for that change order was that Aetna Bridge was told to stop demolition activity on September 17th, and they were allowed to resume demolition October 20th, 2024. And the reason that was put out by government officials in Rhode Island was that they needed the opportunity to preserve evidence for their lawsuit against all these parties, contractors, and consultants who had previously been involved with the westbound Washington Bridge. So you look down here at the bottom, as part of this change order, they revised milestone completion dates for various portions of the demolition work. So again, the change order to include the substructure demolition, 38 million, add that to the 40 plus million for the original contract and they're pushing $80 million. So remember that they changed the milestone dates for some of the activities for the demolition when they issued the change order for the one month stoppage. So the most recent change order is $462,500. This was just issued in January of this year, so a couple of weeks ago. And let's look at the items. So group one milestone incentive and group four milestone incentive. So RIDOT adjusted the dates for completion of various uh, milestone activities and they're paying Aetna Bridge incentive pay of $12,500. So on one item, that's $150,000 and the, on the uh, other item, group four, $312,500 for a total of $462,500. So you can see for that group one activity, they got done on November 8th instead of November 20th. And on this group four item, they got done on October 24th instead of November 18th. So to me, it's a rather interesting situation where a contractor who's being sued as part of this lawsuit uh, by the government of Rhode Island is awarded the demolition contract and several change orders. Rhode Island DOT spends nearly $700,000 for the one month st work stoppage that they ordered and now are providing incentive uh, bonuses to the contractor. And there's additional items for the demolition yet to be completed. So it appears to me that there's additional opportunity for Aetna to make even more money through incentive pay. So I'm just putting it out there. Uh, I think I'll leave it to you uh, folks in Rhode Island to decide what this implies, if anything. 
in terms of project management uh, for this uh, demolition contract because it's a precursor obviously to being able to complete the design and build for the replacement bridge. And you know, RIDOT isn't going to award that contract until June of 2025 and they've got a design phase. So I'm sure it's important to get this demolition done quickly, but are they doing it efficiently? I mean, if they pay in excess of nearly $500,000 for incentive pay, and it could be a lot more, do they actually need to incentivize that way? So again, this isn't real technical stuff. I, that's what I'm mostly interested in, but I just thought it was very, very interesting from an overall project management standpoint, let's say. So uh, if you've got any questions, I've posted uh, Director Alviti and their public affairs officer email addresses in the description to this video if you want to ask them about any of this. I've got another video that's actually produced. I plan to post it before this one, but I thought this was really interesting. So in a few days, I'll post this other video where I talk about uh, five key questions that I think should be asked of Rhode Island DOT specifically and Rhode Island government in general about the nature of the westbound bridge, what's happened in the past and what's going on moving forward. So with that, I'd like to mention, I started Buy Me a Coffee a few weeks back. It's been really good. I appreciate those of you who have contributed to that. You know, the records that I got today, I had to pay for, for time and production costs from Rhode Island DOT. So contributions there certainly helped me to defray those costs. If any of you in the media there in Rhode Island would like a copy of the documents that I obtained from these records requests, uh, shoot me an email at info at ftnc.com. I'd like to send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support as well as those of you who've provided super thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. So stay tuned, there's many more videos to come on this uh, bridge project as well as many other projects across the country and, and internationally as well. Thanks very much everyone.